What is going on, big dog, faithful, long time no see. Haven't seen your pretty faces in about a week, but as I mentioned in the comments, I'm probably gonna stick to doing one video a week. As week two wrapped up, I felt like deja vu. So we had about 78 injuries to the running back position. Same shit that happened last year. Gotta go over all the injuries for you guys because it's waiver wire Wednesday. Tomorrow, double, double, double dubs. Throw your dubs up, waiver wire Wednesday. Gotta get y'all the info you need to make the right decisions, who you wanna pick up, on what team, what kind of value they have, what kind of fab budget are you gonna throw at these motherfuckers. Guys, let's get right into it. Gotta start off with the biggest injury of the week. Obviously, Adrian Peterson, Minnesota Vikings running back, went down. We learned he has a torn meniscus. Sounds a lot worse than it probably is. Anytime you think of torn, you think of weeks, months recovery. Um, we've seen AP recover at a ridiculous rate. You know, he's like a miracle when it comes to tearing his shit up and returning to the field at 100%. But he's looking at a few different options. He can have surgery, he can avoid surgery. If he avoids surgery, it's Tuesday afternoon right now, so I'm going, all everything I say in this video will go off reports that have happened up until now. In the next coming days, obviously, more things are gonna come out, so the paths are gonna be different depending on what happens in the following week. For AP, if he doesn't go under the knife, he could be back in as little as, you know, two weeks. He's not gonna play this weekend, it's ridiculous. Obviously, you know, there's going to be ramifications there because this dude gets 25 touches a game and we need to know where the ball's going to go now. We have Jarek McKinnon, the spark freak, and then we have Matt Asiata, the plotter. But he gets the job done. So I know everyone's first reaction is to say, oh, it's got to be McKinnon, it's got to be McKinnon. But we've seen over the years when AP's not playing, Asiata gets his fair share as well, man. Now, McKinnon, you know, there's been a lot of reports from the Minneapolis Star Tribune or whatever that paper is over there that's saying they believe it's going to be 60 to 65% McKinnon touching the ball as opposed to Asiata. Uh, but how much value is going to be there? Now, when you look at what AP's done so far this year, it's been obviously terrible. For those of you who picked him, you know that. He's averaging such a, such a low yards per carry. But when you look a little deeper, I was reading a couple articles today, and... Uh, the yards before being contacted, you know, by defensive linemen or linebackers, or whatever it may be, were so, so low for AP. I think against the Packers, it was like 0 0.33 yards before being contacted, meaning he's had almost zero running room. His O-line is terrible in terms of the running game for him. So I wouldn't put so much on AP, but I would be devaluing the uh, Vikings run game. And that could be because Sean Hill obviously played a game, so... You know, different dynamics, Bradford looked good, so uh, all in all, i call that a scratch. But looking at McKinnon, obviously the freak athlete, strong, fast, he's one of those guys that can break away speed, he can catch the ball, he can run the ball. Uh, but then you have Asiata, who the coaches trust, he is going to be the third down back there, he is going to be the goal line back, he's a big motherfucker, so he's going to be getting the in between the trenches, you know. Uh, I definitely don't see it being a 65-35 split because that's like what some of the starting running backs in the NFL get now, and I wouldn't consider McKinnon a starting running back over Asiata. I think it's going to be pretty even. Uh, they trust him. They trust Asiata to block, obviously, and that means he's going to be in for third down, which means he's going to get a lot of receiving work. Now, back when uh, AP missed you know, that long stretch because of the suspension or whatever, Asiata averaged on a per-game basis like four points, four fantasy points more than McKinnon. Uh, he had like 44 catches over the year. He was RB17. He scored 10 touchdowns. So, I mean, he's proven he could be productive there. Uh, that being said, I think it depends on the um, how your roster is constructed. If you need someone that's going to be the safer play and someone that, you know, there's a lot of RB injuries this week. So if you need someone that you need to pick up and plug right in, I would go Asiata. He would be my more important waiver pickup because I think he's almost guaranteed 10 to 12 touches. He's going to get the goal line work. Whereas McKinnon, if you have solid running backs, you have solid flex plays already, and you're looking for someone to stash on the bench, and you're looking for someone who's, you know, a decently, uh, decently, 
He's a decent pick as a lotto ticket, you know, because he could easily blow up. If he does start getting those 65% of the carries, there's no telling what he's going to do with them. He's super athletic, and he can make a lot of guys miss. Plays great in space. Um, but then again, you know, it's a running back by committee league now, so it's hard to see McKinnon be the feature back there, which I highly doubt. Um, so it, it depends on your roster makeup, but uh, I like both these guys. I think both these guys should be owned because if something happens to the other one, you know, you never know. If, if AP decides to go under the knife, he could be out till week seven. Uh, there's two different surgeries I read. He, he could be out months if other things go wrong. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, AP is going to be out for a little bit. I guess if I had to choose one, you know, gun to head right now, I'd go McKinnon. That being said, I don't think they're that far far apart. I think that uh, in terms of like fab budget, I think the way people are going to buy McKinnon is going to be outrageously overvalued compared to where people are going to be looking to grab Asiata. But either way, both both need to be picked up. Both need to be owned in all formats, barring an 18 league. And if you're in an 18 league, get off my channel. So next we have Daniel Danny. Head of Wood, Danny Woodhead, torn ACL, brutal, brutal injuries for the Chargers, man. First Keenan, now Danny, Woodhead, torn ACL out for the year, just as Melvin Gordon's coming into his own. Uh, now, what this does is it boosts guys like Antonio Gates, who should see more red zone looks. It, bo it boosts basically everyone on that offense, except for probably Phillip Rivers, because he was such a big part of that offense. Um, I think Melvin Gordon shoots himself into the RB1 discussion now because he should easily be getting 20 touches a game. And I actually just saw a couple minutes ago uh, Dexter McCluster was signed by the Chargers. So he, uh, I, I don't see him making a huge impact immediately. I mean, by maybe like week six or something like that, he could be pretty heavily involved with the pass game. I don't think it really hurts Melvin Gordon right now. Um, I th he's there as insurance. He's there because they don't fully trust Melvin Gordon as their, you know, the workhorse. He's not like a he's not a bad pass catcher. He's proven that he could be athletic and catch the ball and play on third downs. But McCluster's done it before. He's he's a veteran and he's been in the league and he proved that he could do you know he could block he could catch the ball. So that's insurance for them. Otherwise, they have basically no one at running back. Uh, so I wouldn't look too deep into the McCluster thing. I, in my opinion, he's not really worth an ad unless you're in deep league. PPR especially. Next up, we have Johnny Stu. Uh, tweaked his hamstring. It's going to get more tests done this week. We don't know, uh, but Ron Rivera sounded kind of concerned. Uh, the initial prognosis is that he's going to miss a week, possibly two weeks. In his absence, we saw Fozzie Whitaker get 16 carries for 100 yards, so he impressed. Cameron Artis Payne was inactive for the second week in a row. Uh, what like what I've been seeing is that Cameron Artis Payne should get the majority of work there, but like, how does being inactive two weeks in a row give you that idea? They clearly think of him as a lower tier running back to Fozzie Whitaker. I think the hamstring injury could end up being more serious than we think. I mean, I'm not a fucking doctor, so I don't know. We'll wait for the reports to come out, but hamstrings are never good. Jonathan Stewart is always hurt. In my opinion, I'm targeting Fozzie Whitaker. He did a lot with a little last game. He turned those 16 carries into 100 yards. He's also able to catch the ball. Uh, but then again, I mean, they're in the Panthers' offense. So all the running back ceilings are capped because they have arguably the best red zone weapon in Cam Newton. It's going to be running the ball in. Um, so, you know, if like John, Johnny Stewart, who's clearly superior back in that backfield to all the other backs, is only giving you 15 carries for like... 70 yards a game. How much damage could, you know, like a Fozzie Whitaker or a Cameron Artis Payne do compared to that? He's going to be doing worse than that, in my opinion. Uh, we saw Cameron Artis Payne get the majority of work when Jay Stu was out last year, which is interesting to note, but I mean, if they actually thought anything highly of him, why would he not be, why would he be a healthy scratch the first two weeks? Uh, that's just my opinion. I mean, I could be totally wrong. Cameron Artis Payne could be the starter there and see 10, 12, even 15. I highly doubt he'll see anywhere near 15 touches, but could happen. Uh, in my opinion, Jay Stu should be out anywhere from like one to three weeks probably. So I'm not going out and blowing my, I'm not blowing my fab budget on a guy like Fozzie or do like Cap, Cameron Artis Payne. I do think they're definitely worth an ad though. If you can get them for cheap, you know, in a hundred dollar budget, uh, I'd be willing to throw somewhere from like four to six bucks for Fozzie. Same thing with Cameron Artis Payne, just to see where it goes, because J2 is always hurt, so who knows. 
out in Seattle, we have Thomas Rawls, who left the game. Now, his stats up until the point where he left the game were seven carries for negative seven yards. Like, are you shitting me? So, uh, apparently, Pete Carroll said he just got kicked. He's got a light contusion, which is a fancy word for a bruise. I don't know why he didn't just say that. He probably just does it to piss fantasy footballers off, and he does a good job at it. So, he's got a bruise. Uh, all the signs point to him being fine. He'll be ready to go next week. I believe they take on the... 49ers, 49ers, so a juicy ass matchup. But I, you know what? You have gotta think that Christian Michael's role is gonna increase there. I mean, they wanna use Thomas Rawls as the workhorse, but Michael's outplayed Rawls. Uh, who knows what this injury is gonna mean? If I had to put money on it, I would say Michael gets more work than Rawls in this next game. Um, I would say Michael's a flex play, and Thomas Rawls is probably unstartable at this point because he hasn't done anything to prove to us that he's going to get a big workload or that he's going to be put up production. So Next, we head over to Tampa Bay. Now, Doug Martin left with a hamstring injury. He's also going to be getting his MRI today, I believe. Again, it's Tuesday. He sat out the rest of the game when he got injured. We saw Charles Sims go in, and, you know, you figure all you hear about is how Charles Sims could be Feature back if Doug Martin gets hurt. I mean, he was. He had nine touches. He only racked up like 24 yards, I believe it was. Uh, but Sims is a guy who can be the feature back there. He can run the ball. He can certainly catch the ball. He's one of the best pass catching backs in the league. So, I mean, Sims is definitely owned in most leagues. But if he's not owned in your league, I would say Sims is the number one waiver wire ad this week. If, I mean, I guess you're not going to be able to tell by Wednesday, but I'm assuming Doug Martin is going to be missing Sunday's game and Sims would get himself into the RB1 conversation because he'll get a full workload there. So he's my number one waiver wire ad for week three. All right, next we have Amir Abdullah, who left the game with a foot injury. We later found out it's a sprained foot. He's going to a specialist called Dr. Robert Anderson uh, and he's gonna get more tests done, and I would assume it's never a good sign when you have to go see a specialist about something. The x-rays came back negative initially, but I definitely expect Abdullah to miss time. That being said, Theo Riddick was already one of the biggest waiver wire ads last week. Now he's gonna get a ton more work this week, coming up week three. Um, if he is unowned, I would definitely use a top waiver wire spot on him as well. Theo Riddick in a $100 fab budget, I would throw I'm assuming Abdullah is going to miss multiple weeks. Foot injuries are hard to come back from quickly, and they have a high chance of you know re-injuring that. I would throw, if he's available, I would throw 15 to 20 bucks at the Oritic. Maybe more than that, actually. If you think that you're, you know, if you think it's going to be a heavy bid, I would throw anywhere from 15 to 25 percent of your fab budget at it, because he could be a, he could be a fucking baller from here on out. Now he got 15 touches last game, which is incredible. You know if if you're looking for volume there. But they did get this guy, Dwayne Washington, seventh round pick, and I am personally super duper intrigued by D-dubs, Dwayne Washington. He was a converted wide receiver to running back coming into college. Now, literally, if you watch tape of him, he looks like a wide, like if you if you didn't see the first five seconds of a play and all of a sudden in the middle of the field, you saw Dwayne Washington running with the ball, you'd be like, oh, this wide receiver caught the ball and he's running with it. But no, nah, this dude literally looks like a wide receiver, but he plays running back and he's been pretty successful. Uh, it's a pretty small sample size from what he has in college, but the dude is an absolute freak. He's 6'2", 220 pounds. He ran a 4, 440, uh, I think 37 inch vertical jump, like 21 or 22 reps on the bench press. So he's got a very, very rare combination of size, speed, strength, you know, agility, athleticism, all those kind of things. Uh, and I, I'm really intrigued to see what he could do there because he's going to get some opportunity. He's already playing ahead of Zach Zenner uh, at, for the big role there. So he's going to get the goal line work very likely, and he should see some early down work. He's super fast for his size, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him break out for like a 40 or 50-yard touchdown run in the next week or two if Abdul is out. You know, in my 10-man in my league, my big league, I'm debating dropping Blau Powell and trying to pick up Dwayne Washington because I think... This might be a little crazy, but Dwayne might be one of those league winners that not a lot of people realized at the time, but down the stretch, he could do some fucking damage for your team because of what he brings to the table. Uh, now, the opportunity is going to be the only problem there, obviously, because Theo Riddick is going to keep getting his his uh, his share, but Dwayne Washington can catch the ball. Like I said, he's wide receiver turn running back. He has great hands. 
He has uh, great breakaway speed. Uh, and he, to, honestly, to me, I'm a Falcons fan. I watch Tevin Coleman play all the time. He reminds me of a more agile version of Tevin Coleman. Because Tevin Coleman runs upright. Dwayne Washington has some wiggle to him. You know, he can make guys miss. And it's really interesting to see him run. And uh, I'm really, uh, I'm pumped up to see what this dude can do in Detroit. Shouts to you, Dwayne Washington. So, uh, obviously, Theo Riddick's the man there. Dwayne Washington, I would be willing to snag on the waiver wire, though. Lastly, my man's Arian Foster. I'm shocked to see him on this list. Like, unbelievably. Are you, guys, you guys are going to have to be shocked, too, right? He's never had an injury before. He's played all 177 games of his career. Never missed time. He leaves with a groin pull or whatever it is going to be. A groin injury. Adam Gay says it's day to day. Those kind of, it never is with Arian Foster. So this is something you're going to have to wait on throughout the week. Uh, he didn't return to the game, which obviously is never a good sign, but you got to be cautious with a guy like Foster because next play he'll go in and his, his fucking nutsack will fall off or something because of his groin. JHIE, you know, came in, got some touches, as did um, Kenyon Drake. JJI was the pounder in between, and Drake got that goal line touch, and he ended up getting into the end zone. Uh, I think next week, if Foster is out, you'll see a running back by committee for sure. JJI probably leading the pack, I'd say 12 touches. Um, Kenyon Drake, maybe like five to seven, and then you have guys like Damian Williams and Isaiah Pede, who were both inactive last week. They, they might be active and get some touches there. I'm probably staying away from this situation altogether because the Dolphins as a team are pretty fucking terrible. They do have an easy matchup this week with the Cleveland Browns. So, I mean, there could be some production there. Uh, the good news for Ajayi is that he saw some passing work. I think he caught four balls for like 31 yards. So it's good to see him being able to, you know, get that third down roll. Uh, although I definitely don't expect him to be the workhorse there. Who knows if Foster's even going to be out. So me, uh, if I'm targeting a guy, it's obviously Ajayi. Uh, but I'm not blowing any sort of critical amount of money on him. So that's my take there. So we move to the quarterback position. Pigskin throwers. And we saw Jimmy Garoppolo leave with a sprained AC joint. Doctors say he's going to be out three to four weeks, which means he's out for his season because Brady will be back by then. Uh, for me, obviously you're not picking up his backup, Jimmy I think his name is Jimmy Brissett. I don't even know. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is a, this is a downgrade to every pass catcher in New England, but I do think it's an upgrade to Garrett Blunt because you know they're going to rely on the run game. Definitely, this is not. I don't think there's any waiver wire uh, stipulations for this injury. What I do think is interesting is Josh McCown going down. Now the Browns' offense is fucked. You could stream basically any defense you want against them. Uh, Crowell should see more work. He played really well last week. Don't think the carries are going to be there going forward just because the only way he's getting 18 carries again is if the Browns are in a game or they're ahead, and that shit ain't happening again this year probably. Um, so, you know, here are a couple streamers. If you have had Jimmy Garoppolo or something like that or you're just going week to week, I think Joe Flacco again for the second time in a row. They get the Jaguars who have been torched. Ryan Tannehill, like I just said, goes against the Cleveland Browns. Then we have Philip Rivers, who you'd expect, you know, to really decrease in terms of his fantasy production, but he did his thing last week. I think he threw for four touchdowns, and now he gets the Colts defense. Nobody's fucking worse than the Colts defense. They're literally without, like, their top seven cornerbacks. It's ridiculous. I think that might be them calling. It is. Oh, you need, you need me to try out for... Okay. Yeah, I'll be there. All right, word. So I'm going to be a starting cornerback for the Colts this weekend, which means you should play Phillip Rivers. So Alex Smith plays against the Jets as well. Uh, Smith has been throwing the ball a lot more so far this this year. He's looked decently okay. Uh, not a great game against the Texans, but they're a good defense. Now I guess the Jets, who have been absolutely torched, uh, let up like 25 fantasy points to Tyrod Taylor last week. I mean, come on, it's the Bills. So those are four quarterbacks definitely in the streaming consideration Conversation, consideration, conversation. Shit, I'm like a lyricist. Lyricist, literature lyricist. All right, I'm done. Now we'll move over to the receiver uh, category. We had not a lot of action here. We had uh, in the Seahawks team, Doug Baldwin and Tyler Lockett both left with injuries briefly. Both came back to play in the game. Uh, I don't think they're going to be sitting out this week. So that's they're like day-to-day, -day, but they, all, they both came back into the game after their injuries, so I'm not worried about them. 
We had Julio Jones who's been, this, Julio Jones is literally born with an ankle. He was literally born questionable with an ankle injury. So I'm not worried about him and his little calf strain. I'm sure he'll be able to play. So he's fine there. Should look out for Mohamed Sanu though, because obviously he's the number two. If something were to happen to Julio or he can't suit up for some reason, Mohamed Sanu is like a guaranteed 10 to 12 targets because he's going to be the number one there. Next we could look at Dante Moncrief. So he left with a shoulder injury. He didn't return to the game. We haven't really heard an update from him yet up to this point when I'm doing this video. Interestingly though, Philip Dorsett, if Moncrief misses this game, I think Dorsett has huge appeal. He's already the receiving uh, leader for the Colts. He has the most receiving yards on the team and he has the second most targets behind T.Y. Hilton. He already has more targets than Moncrief. So uh, Dorsett could easily end the year as wide receiver two in this indie offense. Moncrief misses time. I think Dorsett is a great plug and play this week for a wide receiver. We can touch on my boy B. Marsh. Let me down a little bit, but I think he will turn it around. Now, oh my God, I w I'll be honest with you. I wasn't even watching the Thursday night game, the Jets Bills, which is retarded because I had like four guys playing in it. And I also had money on the Jets winning that game. But, you know, that's just, like, way too much fucking anxiety for me. So, I'm like, I'm going to turn this shit off. Let it just do its thing. And I'll check the box score at the end because I don't have time for this right now. I don't... My heart... I don't have it in me to watch that game. My, like, my, my shit will, like, explode, you know? Like, I get anxiety over this shit. It's such a problem. I need to, I need to go to a fan... Are there any fantasy football doctors out there? Because I feel like that is a profession, a market that has not been tapped yet. Just strictly anxiety for people that play fantasy football like me. Um, I forget what I was even saying. Brandon Marshall twisted his whole shit back. His whole knee was like, he like he took an L on that knee. Like his fucking leg was like an L. And uh, I'm getting blown up in my group chat. You know, we have a group chat for our fantasy football league, and they're like, oh shit, Nick, you're done. Like, have a good season. See you next fall or whatever. All this bullshit. I'm like, what happened? I see a picture of B. Marsh's knee, and I'm like, fuck. Turns out. He's okay. Sprain knee, and then Todd Bull said it wasn't a sprain knee. Either way, he's day to day right now. Uh, B Marsh is a tough dude. You're gonna have to keep an eye on that. But if B Marsh doesn't play, Anunwa, that slot receiver who's been getting a ton of targets, I think he's averaging like, I think he's, I think he has 145 yards and a touchdown over over the two games, and he's seen like eight, seven or eight targets per game with Marshall and Decker both playing. Uh, and along with Forte getting a ton of targets. So Nunwa seems to be like a real piece of that offense here. If Marsh misses some time, he could, you know, get up to eight, ten targets uh, in their next game. And I think that would be a really good pickup for guys who are looking for a wide receiver. So look towards Nunwa. Keep your eye on the reports from B. Marsh. I'm not worried about him right now. Not really worried about any other wide receivers. This was like the same shit happened last year, man. The running backs just keep going down, keep going down. This is why I preached this whole zero wide zero running back theory because running backs just get killed every fucking year, man. Can't trust them hoes. Anyways, you know, I wanted to do this quickly for you guys because the waiver wire is tomorrow. I still have to set like my six teams and figure out who I want to pick up where. I Every year I'm like, yo, I'm only going to do one to two teams. Like a week later, I'm like mid, I have like three drafts going on at the same time. I'm like a live draft, I'm like online draft, live draft, like email draft. I'm like, why do I do this to myself, man? It's the worst. But do this for you guys. I Hopefully it helped. Um, just to recap, I guess my top pickups would be Charles Sims if he's available, Theo Riddick if he's available. And then I personally love Dwayne Washington. If I had to choose someone on the Panthers to pick up, it would be Fozzie Whitaker and then Cameron Artis Payne. Based on, you know, just production last week and how we saw the carry split and Cap has been inactive the first two games while he's healthy. So uh, that's where I would go there. I wouldn't blow a big budget on either of those dudes. Uh, same thing goes in Miami. If Foster misses a game, I would stick to Ajayi as the one guy there, but also I'm definitely not blowing any serious amount of money. Uh, on those dudes so you know that's where that leaves me and uh it's been a pleasure i hope you guys are 2-0 because i'm not in my big league i'm one and one i lost last week thanks to alan robinson thanks to drew Brees, thanks to so, like how do I, I start matt forte and i still end up losing by 40 points man i fucking hate fantasy i'm just lying i don't hate fantasy but i love y'all as always go follow us on twitter at BDGE underscore fantasy FB. Go uh, tweet at me, leave a comment below. Feel free to email me. All that stuff will be in the description underneath the video. 
Make sure you go like this video if you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, I don't care, put a thumbs up also, because I'm swaggy like that. You can subscribe if you're not already subscribed, but I know I have my loyal following who are probably the only people that watch this. I don't even know how I get more subscribers. It's kind of cool that YouTube's like so organic with the growth. But I always appreciate you guys watching and I appreciate all the comments. I read all the comments, don't worry. If I don't get back to you within like two or three days, follow up on the comment, follow up on the email and I will eventually try my hardest to get back to you. Also, I mean, I don't know if you guys give a shit, but I put my personal Instagram, Snapchat down there if you want to follow me, whatever, 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 whatever. One more announcement actually, not fantasy football related, but I did accept a job offer in New York City and I will be starting this upcoming Monday, which means I'm gonna be super, super, super fucking busy. I'm gonna be leaving my house at like 7.30 a.m., probably earlier than that, and not getting home until probably 7.30 at night because the commute sucks dick, but I'm gonna try my best to keep this updated. I'm, I'm gonna have to get a schedule going where I get a video out every Tuesday, just like this. I think I'm gonna stick to this format where it's just like the top waiver wire ads of the week um, because it just takes too long doing recaps and everything. But I hope you guys enjoyed it again. So, you know, I'll see y'all next week. Good luck. Great.